Att en keppe en år och ull och slita. Och kajta var det som är snidig och rälla. Up next, Russ is going to let me talk for about 10 minutes straight on The Northman. I heard it stars Bjork. That. And the more. Moving on to some recent Blu-ray news and 4K news. And that's actually a movie I was really super, super pumped to see. I've been kind of hyping myself up to see it. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of hype online about it. And that is The Northman. Nicole Kidman, Alexander Skarsgård. Anya Taylor Joy's back. Oh, it's got, hey, it's got a lot of people I love. We've got Ethan, Ethan Hawke. Yep. Got my man Ethan Hawke. I love Nicole Kidman. Yep. I love Bjork. Willem Dafoe's in it Willem for like Willem Dafoe rocks. For those that aren't aware, and Russ, I don't think you were even aware until we looked at this poster, but this is the guy that made The Witch and The Lighthouse. So he's made, to this point, two very indie art house movies. This is his, you know, time to put something out that is a blockbuster, so to speak. Those other movies were in the theaters, sure, but this was his. This was like, like pitched to wider audiences. This is even by his own admission, like the closest thing to a movie he's ever put out, where it's easy to follow. It's not like I think he even said the lighthouse is barely a movie, like as far as what's how coherent it is. Like this, you can easily follow, you know, and all that stuff while still trying to put a lot of attention to detail on everything like he does and try to provide a lot of atmosphere and sort of blend together his sensibilities in that indie art house world with what the mainstream audiences are probably looking for, like smash it all together. Sure. Northman. This is out this week on 4k ultra HD in a collector's edition, which I want to come back to in a second. Cause it's interesting that the studio is putting out a collector's edition. What does that even mean? This clocks in at around two hours and 15 minutes. And much like The Witch and much like The Lighthouse, I think it does have a lot of atmosphere. There's a lot of attention to detail, mythology, you know, all the, the Norse and Viking, you know, mythology and stuff. There's a lot paid attention to that production value, obviously cinematography. The, the movie is visually stunning. You can watch the trailer and know like this guy knows how to put something together visually. You could see that with The Witch and The Lighthouse both. But this movie, clearly the set pieces are great. Everything he's trying to do, it looks awesome. He, do, he didn't have final cut on this. And he said that the studio did make him trim some things, which in hindsight, in an interview that I read, he basically said it was probably for the best because they're trying to make a movie. A lot of people want to see. I'm kind of butting against that a little bit, but I also want the same things that they want. So I made some concessions, but I'm okay with them. It seems like he knows what's up and he's not like full of shit about it. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. So that's kind of the intro to this movie. Now I, I want to go through my thoughts and kind of share a little bit of a summary of what this movie was. I might go into spoiler territory a little bit, but I'll try to you know mention that before I do it. My thoughts initially, having only seen this movie once, and I will say I would like to see it a second time. It was kind of middle of the road. <laughs> My general thought is, like I said, he was trying to go for blockbuster on one end and trying to go art house on the other, try to sandwich it together and make something great. Mm -hmm. I don't think he succeeded. On either. Yeah, kind of. Hold your tongue! Nearly like the first hour of this movie was so by the numbers, it was so predictable. From the standpoint of, I need this movie to be accessible to audiences, every plot point you just saw coming. Like Now again, this guy's got a vision and he can visually put something together. And I'm not saying he stole from any one person, but it's like for all the movies I've seen, I was kind of expecting to go into this and be kind of surprised and kind of blown away by this next iteration of what this director's capable of. And I kind of felt like bored, honestly, for the first hour. This is not the work of my God. And maybe, and maybe that's me hyping it up too much. Maybe that's me wanting something more than what I deserve to get. I don't know. I mean, at a two hour and 15 minute runtime, I, I feel like, again, in some ways he was trying to take his time with certain things. Like The Witch is 90 minutes long and it feels two hours long because he wants to take his time with atmosphere and just long shots and all the stuff. It's like with this two hour and a half, two hour, 15 minute epic, I feel like there's not a lot of room or time to do that. And there were so many times where I felt like the movie just stopped dead in its tracks when finally some momentum was coming that it just didn't it just didn't work two hours and 15 minutes dude the first 20 minutes of this movie is the whole build up to like ethan hawk getting killed and all stuff that whole 20 minutes could have been a flashback could have started with alexander skarsgård here just going to town being an awesome viking and then they just flash back to what happened to him i also think this movie portrays itself one way in the trailer and it kind of seemed a little bit different to me like the movie is about revenge he's trying to get revenge on this guy that killed his father and the whole movie looks like it's just like some race to the finish line but it's actually kind of slow. He goes to find this guy. He immediately finds him, immediately. And instead of immediately killing him, he's like, 
I can't kill him yet. It's destiny. I've got to wait for the right moment and the right thing, but I'm going to stalk him. I'm going to watch him. And he like becomes like a slave on his vill in his little village. So he can kind of watch him. I'm like, so now this movie is going to be him kind of like watching him from afar and not really get his revenge. Like certain things just really like slowed me down. Like me personally slowed me down. There was all kinds of things like that that happened. There's a lot of things that, I mean, like I said, there, there are to love about this movie. I just feel like the content, the story was just not enough to keep me there. But I so would like to see this is the worst again. film he's done so far. Like I did watch The Lighthouse and I don't even know what I watched. At least I know what I saw here and maybe this would be in the middle. Here comes a spoiler. So his dad gets killed and Nicole Kidman, who's his mom, gets taken away by this guy too and they go to live somewhere else and he's been basically trying to find him this whole time. When he finally finds the guy and he's stalking him and he's finally about to make his move and he goes to rescue Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman says, like, I can't believe you're here. I, like, I've never wanted you anyway. Like, you, I didn't want your father. We planned this whole thing for him to be killed. You were born not out of love. Like, I never wanted you. Like, when your father had, me and him, you know, I was raped. That's how this, like, she, like, decimates this man. <laughs> and then at this moment, you would think, like, okay, this whole revenge kind of is just, like, crumbling. You know, like, I guess that's it. And he has opportunity to then leave. But he ends up, to follow his destiny and get this revenge anyway. And I, I, again, I kind of like felt, I kept falling off every time certain things happened in this movie. I was like, you just found all this stuff out. You don't just kill Nicole Kidman right now. He didn't, <laughs> you know, it's like, nope, didn't kill her. Like still my mom, I still love you. And he just like leaves. And then he's still going to get revenge on this guy later. The final battle arena where he has to fight this guy, the legendary sword, this vital information that he has to get to do all, to put all this together. All of these things, all three of these very important things all exist on the tiny island where the bad guy lives. Nice. It isn't until... That's convenient. It's like, maybe this is all the way that it's supposed to be. Maybe it is his destiny that it's all there. But for me, just some things just weren't clicking. So I can't recommend The Northman. I bet you it looks amazing in 4K. And if I had the opportunity to watch it in 4K, like streaming at some point, that might be the time I would check it out again. Because I bet you it does look incredible. And maybe that experience will be the second time now that I know what it is. I'll enjoy yeah. it a little bit more. It could be me. It could be me going into it thinking I'm like going to get something that I wasn't going to get. So you could have a totally different experience. Everyone could. So give it a chance. It is a spectacle. It is an epic. There's just nitpicks in the story that. <laughs> there's just nitpicks in the story that I just wasn't with. It's out. It's worth checking out. It's a worthwhile director. I mean, the cast is really cool. And it's an interesting movie to watch. It just, just fell flat for me personally. I've forgotten it already.